Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining me on this presentation um, on our work titled Exploiting Digital Micromere Devices for MUI Communication. First of all, let's start with the concept of communicating with light. Um, we can modulate the intensity of the light source by turning it on and off, such as what we show here. So when the flashlight is on and it emits light, it represents a signal one. And when it is off and it emits no light, it represents a signal zero. But alternatively, we can also modulate the intensity of light by using an external surface. So in this case, um, on one side of the surface, the flashlight is on at all times. But on the other side of the surface, uh, different signals can be observed depending on whether this surface allows light to pass through it or not. In our work, we focus on the second type of communication, which is called ambient light communication or backscattering communication. The advantage of using an external surface is that it allows us to use any type of light sources, be it artificial lighting, um, such as street light or any sort of indoor lighting, or natural light, such as the sunlight. Because now we do not need to uh, physically turn the light source on and off anymore. This concept of ambient light communication dates all the way back to the 19th century, so almost 150 years ago. In 1880, Alexander Bell built the first passive link using sunlight. This was the first wireless phone um, communicated over a distance of over 200 meters. And dating back to even earlier than this, um, mirrors were used in battlefields as a signaling device by reflecting sunlight into distant receivers. So of course, the radio was invented uh, some years after, and it took over wireless communication. The optics and MEMS devices um, also developed significantly in, over the last two decades, and we thought it would just worth revisiting this old idea. The motivation of using light to communicate is that in modern times, the RF spectrum is very overcrowded. Wireless traffic has been growing exponentially, and various alternative um, technologies have been um, explored. Among them, visible light communication uh, has gained a lot of attention because, as you can see here, the visible light spectrum is much wider than the radio spectrum. Um, both of the two, com the two methods of communicating with light that I showed earlier, the active and ambient light communication, they both have, you have this advantage because they both use light as the carrier for information. But in addition to this, ambient light communication also allows us to take advantage of the pervasiveness of light and turn any light that exists in our environment into a carrier for information. So for example, in a typical indoor setting, there are oftentimes more than one type of ambient light. For example, such as uh, sunlight coming in from the window, the ceiling lights, lamps, and etc. Our goal in light backscattering communication is to take advantage of the pervasiveness of ambient light sources and to piggyback information on top of energy that already exists. In this work, we have two main contributions. The first one is that we build an analytical tool for ambient light communication, which allows us to gain a deeper insight of the various systems. And the second contribution is that we develop a novel platform using a new type of transmitting surface, which increases the data rate of our system compared to state-of-the-art studies. There are three key components to a backscattering light system. We have the light source, the transmitter, and the receiver. In state-of-the-art systems, each of these three components have a vastly different implementation. For example, the light source can be artificial light um, that ranges from 3 watt all the way to 30 watt, or from 400 lux in indoor conditions to over 40,000 lux in outdoor in direct sunlight. This already means that the amount of energy available for the system to piggyback on varies greatly. Similarly, the transmitters um, are a different combination of surfaces, um, and the receiver also has a different area gains and also field of views. This difference in the implementation of the system uh, also contribute to a very large range of achieved distance and data rate of the system. Past studies have demonstrated a system with a communication range of 1 meter to over 100 meter. 
uh, with a data rate of uh, between 125 bits per second to 8 kilobits per second. But without further insights into the system, it is very difficult to actually build like this um, very large difference in performance to um, either the method or the setup of the system. So in an, in an attempt to address this issue, the first contribution of our paper looks to design an analytical tool to quantify the role of each component in the system. So here are the three components again. Communication is achieved by reflecting light from the light source, um, modulating them, and redirect them towards the receiver. The directivity of the light source determines how much of the light from the source can be intercepted by the um, transmitting surface, which is represented in blue. So given a light bulb, for example, the beam can be white, white can only a small portion can be captured by the transmitting surface. But if, for example, if a flashlight is used, there will be a narrower beam and more, more of the power can be captured. Similar with the surface, the pattern of the reflected light also determines how much of the light that is intercepted in the transmitter can eventually reach the receiver. So with the tool that we developed, we aim to answer these two questions. So firstly, in the case of a natural light, we want to know how much light that is um, on the transmitter can actually be retained from the transmitter to the receiver. And in the case of artificial light, we want to know how much light can be retained from the light source through the modulating surface towards the receiver. In this talk, we focus on um, the impact of the light source as we have seen that it has the largest impact on the performance. But the same uh, principle applies to both the transmitter and the receiver. For the light source on a clear day, for example, where we can see the direct, uh, can see direct sunlight, only a small, small part of the sunlight can be captured by a transmitter. And then, but then since the sun is so far away and the light rays, um, all this light rays represented by these arrows are parallel and, and they do not spread out much after they, have, they are reflected if the surface is smooth. So we can say that the attenuation is very small and that direct sunlight um, is, uh, is advantageous for long distance communication. On the other hand, on a cloudy day, even though it is still very bright outside, but because of the light rays come from all sorts of different directions due to diffraction of the environment, um, which is represented by the blue arrows, um, similar to the case of the direct sunlight, only a portion of them can be intercepted by the transmitting surface. But when we're considering a smooth um, surface, the reflected light, which is um, represented by green arrows here, also go in all sorts of direction and only a very small portion of that, which is represented by this single yellow arrow, is actually be able to um, be redirected towards the receiver. So we can say that the field sunlight is um, no, it's very, not very good for um, communication because the light rays are unpredictable and also the attenuation um, over distance is high. In terms of the case of a regular light bulb, since it is radiating outward, only a small fraction of the radiated light will be able to reach the transmitter, as um, represented by red arrows here. And given the smooth surface, the reflected light will follow the same pattern as the light source. So the reflected light will spread out again, and only a fraction of this will be able to reach the receiver. So um, the light bulbs are have more predictive, predictable light patterns, but their attenuation or distance is also high, quite high, making them unsuitable, not so suitable for very long dis distance communication. And in this example, so we assume that the surface is smooth, um, but similarly to the light source, different characteristics of the surface will result in different reflected patterns. So for example, if we have a smooth surface, we can pretty much trace the reflected light from the incoming light as represented by the black arrows here. But if we have a rough surface, then the reflected light can spread out um, regardless of the light source, which is shown in the blue arrow here. 
Connecting this a bit to the taxonomy of um, state-of-the-art studies, so these two columns represent the two different types of surface. Um, the left side is a specular mirror-like surface, and then on the right side is a diffuse rough surface. So when a diffuse light source is used, um, regardless of the light source, uh, the light pattern is similar. And when specular surfaces are used, the light sources make a big difference in data rate and also the shearable range of the system. Firstly, there hasn't been any work that uses diffuse sunlight together with um, specular surface. Most commonly studies have used um, LED lights and flashlights, and they're able to reach a maximum distance of about 10 meters with a data rate of between half a kilobits per second to four kilobits per second. But with the work that actually piggybacks information on sunlight, um, a distance of over 50 meters was achieved at similar data rate. In summary, in this part of the work, we develop a tool that is able to both categorize and quantify the performance of different systems. Our analysis shows that with sunlight and the specular surface, the system will be able to achieve naturally the longest range, and that motivates us to look into a mirror-like device for a second part of our paper. In past studies, almost all of the systems uses liquid crystals as the core modulator. Liquid crystals um, is a device with two states, transparent and opaque. A liquid crystal shutter can change between these two states by receiving a DC voltage of just a few volts. And it's very economical and widely available. However, liquid crystal has some inherent limitations due to its operating principles. First, even with um, in a clear state, 50% of the power of the incident light is absorbed. And in addition, to liquid crystals typically have a very slow response because they rely on the voltage and also physical torque to change states. And this makes the full switching time um, of liquid crystal shutters to be around 150 Hertz. The slow transition speed is the limiting factor of ambient light communication systems with liquid crystals. Even with the complicated uh, modulation scheme utilizing multiple LCs, the highest communication data rate ever demonstrated was eight kilobits per second. In this work, we want to explore the possibility of a different type of surface using a different technology, which is the digital micromirror device. A DMD is a MEMS device, um, which contains millions of these tiny mirrors that can be switched to one of the two directions, as you can see here. DMDs are widely used as part of a tightly integrated projection system. And because of this intended applications, off-the-shelf DMDs can typically only be modulated at a frequency of up to 120 Hertz, which it was even slower than the liquid crystal. In our work, our goal is to turn the digital micromirror device from a projection device that conveys image to a modulator that conveys signals. To do this, we isolate just the digital micromirror device um, from the projection system and build a controller around it. The controller has a power management system um, to supply power and also an FPGA device who can control the switching of the mirrors. This allows us to control the switching of the mirror at a much faster speed. Um, and because our receiver is a single pixel receiver, we opted to use the entire DMD array as a single pixel device, which further increases the speed. We demonstrated that we were able to increase the modulation frequency from 120 hertz to 217 kilohertz. To evaluate the performance of DMD against liquid crystal shutters, which are again used in almost all state-of-the-art studies, we perform an experiment using a flashlight as the light source and um, a photodiode as the receiver. In this experiment, we use four different frequencies to represent two, a two-big signal, and we send a short text of Hello World a hundred times. And this experiment is, uh, is, represented, is repeated 30 times at each location. We set up the experiment with both the digital micromirror device and liquid crystals with the same surface area and illumination condition. And we evaluate the maximum data rate that we were able to achieve over the same distance. So here you can see that with a liquid crystal shutter, 
We were able to achieve uh, the maximum data rate of one kilobits per second over six meters. And, and with the digital micro mirror devices, we were able to achieve a data rate of 30 kilobits per second over the same distance, which is a 30 times improvement. In this experiment, we use a platform that uh, from a previous study of the local crystals, which had a slow response time. And since the switching speed of DMDs is much faster than that of the LCs, we also test the system with a receiver that has a higher bandwidth. So here at the fixed distance of two meters, on the right here, you can see that we tested two different types of photo receivers. Uh, one was designed for the slower response and one with the faster response. And we were able to demonstrate that with the faster photo dial, we were able to um, achieve a data rate of 80 kilobits per second, which more than two times the speed that we were able to achieve with the previous receiver. With, uh, we believe that with a more sophisticated receiver design, with more two-stage amplification, the DMDs have the potential to achieve even a higher speed. In conclusion, in our study, we developed an analytical tool to provide insights into the um, different ambient light communication systems. Um, they, based on the insights we obtained from the tool, we also present PhotoLink, which is our platform that explores a different type of optical surface, digital micro mirror devices. We're able to achieve a data rate of 30 kilobits per second and increasing the data rate um, for a factor of 30 compared to liquid crystal, using liquid crystal shutters as receivers. Thank you again, and I would be happy to take any questions that you might have.